everybody, we're here at Tech Week 2015. Uh, I'm sitting down with Beth Kendig here at Tech Week. We're going to talk a little bit about mobile as well as her website, Citizen Tech. Um, Beth, you are a mobile expert, um, as we've been talking here about mobile and not rolling. Um, you want to explain a little bit? We were talking about the numbers, how mobile on the how advertising on mobile is so much different from uh, advertising on a typical web page, um, as well as some of the other forms of advertising. Yeah, I would say that mobile's biggest challenge is advertising. Um, it's a seven billion device industry, two trillion a year. Uh, of that, right now, a hundred billion dollars in ad spend. That will that's a four hundred and thirty percent increase from twenty thirteen. We will hit two hundred billion by twenty nineteen. All of those dollars are having a very hard time finding relevancy. So I'll just give you some background. When you think of advertising, it all began on television. If you want to think about Coca-Cola or Pepsi, Nielsen, with panel data and associated, audi uh, associated audiences, allows Coca-Cola and Pepsi to know more or less who they're reaching when they advertise in the Super Bowl. So they know that these are likely to be cola drinkers. And on desktop, uh, cookies, which are files that go between the, the browser and the server, they start to store information so that Coca-Cola and Pepsi also know uh, that you know, I've reached my, my audience. So for instance, they might want to reach MTV. Uh, they might want to do a campaign on MTV between the summertime and reach 18 to 24 year olds if they're Pepsi. And they might want to have celebrities that are in the hip hop band. And they know that they're reaching these people, right? So we have no way to discuss audience on Google today. So more or less what's happening is you see all these ad dollars coming in and the ads are having to be run over and over and over again, which creates ad fatigue. Uh, the other thing is we're seeing brands not even enter the mobile space. A lot of the ad spend on mobile is published by the publisher, uh, and that's because you can go and you can make this install happen. But the biggest challenge is once we can start to describe these audiences, we can start to allow ad dollars to come in. Obviously, the very best example of this is Facebook. So in 2011, Facebook had zero revenue on it. It's now 73% of Facebook's revenue, and that's 100% purely because they can describe their audience, and Pepsi or Coca-Cola know that they can reach those people on that level. So the so biggest challenge is really analytics. You can you can analyze all the data for web pages, but on mobile there's just there's not the cookies, there's not the Nielsen ratings. That's the real challenge. Is you don't technically know who is accessing that web page at that time. Right, and so you will have analytics, which are like how many times have you opened the app, how long are they in the app. Gaming is one of the best examples. So you have all these gaming apps. Uh, Clash of Clans makes five million dollars a day, and there's really no way to determine at any given time you're reaching if you're an advertiser. Clash of Clans has a wide range of players of, across many demographics. How do you segment those and reach them? Because when players aren't signing are signing up too, they're not saying I miss old, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's just a username and a password and they can play. Which really creates a, a challenge. Um, you mentioned you mentioned Facebook. Um, how is Facebook's um, ability to split their presence over multiple forms. How has that helped their their, their advertising? Uh, are we talking about like messenger I I miss, and I'm, Yeah. How is how is Facebook's decision to split its presence over multiple apps helping? Well, it's interesting you bring that up because um, today I'm presenting how to win on mobile. I've also presented more from the data side and when you break up your platform into single purpose apps, so Facebook Messenger is a great example, you can mine the data much much quicker and much easier. And uh, so just in general, if you look at all of the publishers on mobile, all of these advertisers that want to get on mobile, and then you look at what Facebook is doing, the only difference is that they have the right data. And when, going back to the analytics, so we have this, this in-app analytics, uh, and this is so key to understand because there are many analytics products on the market which will tell you how your users are interacting within your own app, but that doesn't necessarily tell you who they are. So it, it doesn't necessarily tell you uh, that they're getting married, or that they just graduated, or that they're on spring break right now. Um, and those are the kinds of uh, 
that's the audience information that advertisers need in order to feel confident to enter that meeting. The biggest common mistake that advertisers make is by looking at the current metrics that we have. So one metric is uh, what's called CPI, so you're basically paying for install. Another one is paying for view. Um, the issue with that is it doesn't allow uh, the audience measurement, uh, the audience to be measured effectively. So if you look at TV and we look at desktop, there's something called the gross rating point, and that allows a, a larger range of how the audience is interacting with the ad. So when I see a Coca-Cola ad and I'm watching the Super Bowl, I don't just run out and buy a Coca-Cola, right? <laughs> And that's essentially the way that the metrics are set up right now on mobile, and, and I believe we will see that shift soon, which is to the GRP system that we have on television and we have on desktop. Yeah. Another great thing that you can do on mobile with data that is, is coming down the line is uh, different creatives. So once you know who these people are, it's also going to be important to send the right message at the right time. Um, so for instance, let's say you're Dodge, the car maker. Um, do you send a minivan ad to people who are middle-aged and have children, or are you going to send a fuel efficiency car ad to somebody who's 18 and, and just out of, uh, out of high school? Um, so these different creatives, we might see up to 40 different permutations of creatives being sent at any given time. That's the ultimate way to go, knowing who, who they are and having an accurate ad. And again, most of this is pulled from location, contextual, social, and then also other apps. So the fact that I have like TechCrunch on my phone and I have uh, you know Etsy, you know, you can start to you can start to figure out that uh, somebody likes fashion and they also like technology, so I might be a great choice for an Apple Watch ad. According to the other apps that I have on my phone, my device. So they're able to actually pull that data once installed and use it. Today. Today. Right. And then location too, I'm in Chicago right now. Great time to send me Chicago ads. I live in San Francisco. That would change tomorrow. So go to San Francisco and you get different ads. Whereas you're in Chicago, come check out this in Chicago or stuff like that. It's very cute. Contextual. Okay. StubHub would want to know that if I'm in Chicago, give me a Cubs ticket yep. and, and, and feed that to me versus you know the Giants. And that's the kind of pinpoint accuracy that data can enable, can enable that Facebook currently has because Facebook would know if I like the Chicago Cubs on my social profile and I like the Giants on my profile. They just have so much more data to work with compared to just that Dodge or some of the other advertisers. You have to rely on more context, location, what's installed on the phone, things like that. So it's, I mean, it's really a big challenge for advertisers, but they're spending so much money on mobile versus maybe not as much, I don't know the exact data, maybe not as much on traditional web pages. I mean, $100 billion. It is, and that's what PersonaGraph is doing. You know, it is basically allowing some of the advantage that Facebook has and bringing it to the other, there's a billion apps on the marketplace, right? I mean, most of our customers are in the top 100 apps, They're yeah. those publishers, because they are sophisticated enough to need that now. Um, so, and then also the advertisers, the brands, and the media buyers who are our customers as well, the Coca-Colas, uh, you know, those big brands that we, that we work with, because they also need to reach and make sure that their ad dollars are being used wisely. So for, say you've got a company that's coming out with an ad, would you suggest that maybe they, from the get-go, do something in terms of making sure they have some sort of analytics set up, whether it's your service or something else, or do they need to wait until maybe they have more established, a more established user base? I would say a more established user base, and I think where we're going towards the problem from Persona Graph's angle is we're looking at those advertisers, and that's where um, you know a lot of that's where we're seeing uh, our product resonate the most is because they want to get on mobile. Right, if you're Coca-Cola, you're spending three to four billion dollars globally. You're spending a lot on television, you're spending a lot on desktop, you see millennials are completely captured by mobile, and you're not able to reach those millennials. That is where PersonaGraph um, comes in, is that we work directly with those advertisers and those media buyers to make sure that they can enter more and reach those millennials or more yeah. yeah. So I guess another question would be, we have this shift from five years ago it was strictly Android phones, iPhones, but now we've got tablets and fabrics and 
these large machines that are essentially just glorified mobile devices. How much does that change, I guess, the landscape? Sure, so one thing that, you know, these big brands and advertisers are uh, becoming concerned with is like an omni-channel uh, data uh, collection so that when you're going from TV to second screen to third screen, you know, your mobile your phone, your tablet, that they can actually measure the effectiveness of the campaign across these devices. And so that's another element of data which is critical, you know, as we accumulate more devices per person. You run citizen tech. Right. And from everything I've read, you got 300 writers um, publishing 2 million page views, I assume, a month uh, in content. Talk a little bit about that. It seems very interesting. Sure. Well, we peaked in 2013, and it's, you know, and so we're redoing it now. Uh, there was a pause there for, I, I, we're not at 2 million right now. Uh, page views. Uh, we were in 2013. We were uh, number 19 out of 924 publishing properties, so we're in the top 20. Uh, Alexa ranking at 40,000, and what that's allowed, you know, what that has allowed for is people to self-publish without having to maintain a blog on a daily basis, and it's really exciting just to be able to be in the middle of all of that activity and all of that communication from these executives, these developers, these publishers. Um, I mean, I have published some incredible stories on that site. Uh, some of my favorite is that I published a Bitcoin article by Chris Larson. He created the Ripple Protocol. I had over 700,000 views on that article. Uh, Gaj Jed of 500 Startups wrote about how Facebook is a waste of time for India and just how important it is it, as the tech community to solve real world problems. And so he called it Facebook is a waste of time uh, because we need social media we don't have clean water. Yeah. Uh, I love that article. The other one that I loved is there's two indie developers that took on YouTube, and there was this big fight, and they got shut down. And they had they had a platform to publish, and they they blew up early on Reddit and had at least twenty thousand views off that article in one day. Um, Reddit is huge. That's a great distribution method. So behind that, I assume there is editorial process and all that. So people can publish whatever they want, but it has to have a proof of We will be more and more exclusive uh, because of the time constraints. So there's definitely a proof of process. If people want to publish, they should reach out to me. And we're going to form it more around a newsletter moving forward. So that people can once a week get top thought leaders in the industry, their blogs. So it'll be more of a newsletter format, not a log in and read this article and that article and that article. More of a here's 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 a short, concise. Here's what you should. Do. Exactly. So a newsletter and then an archived website. Beth, thanks for talking with me. Always enlightening. I I love numbers, statistics, all that stuff. So the analytics always is always interesting. Um, I'll put a link to Citizen Tech down at the bottom as well as once the video is live for your presentation, I'll put it in the description as well. Uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and especially this YouTube page for more Tech Week 2015 coverage.